Hey internet, this is Shadow Siren 888 coming to you guys with fashion tips. So I live in California as you may or may not know. So a lot of the fashions I see are really common here. I'm not even talking about fashions that you see in the media or in Hollywood fashions, no. I'm telling you guys the fashions that I see on a regular basis where I live. And I live right now in Humboldt County and it's... And I'm going to basically focus on the ones that aren't generally specific for here for Humboldt County. Because some of our fashions are just like, whoa, way out there. So, starting with stuff that makes me crazy. And it may be a little off sketch just because it's college. But let me just go about fashion accessories that I despise. Number one, Uggs. Uggs! God! They are house slippers. They are little, like, boots that are made of lambskin, and they have now become more popular and trendy, and I'm starting to see on Chick.com, you can get bedazzled Uggs. And they just look like fuzzy bricks on your feet when you walk. It's, it's stupid to me that you dress up nice and then you, like, throw slippers on it. And people try and justify it's like, why not look fabulous and comfortable? And it's like, I, I see a similar trend that's most common in colleges where I see girls put makeup on, doll themselves up, and then throw sweats pants on. Sweatpants? You're gonna go through an hour in the morning to do your hair and makeup and you're gonna throw sweatpants on? Yeah! Sorry, I had to take time out. Um, also, I call it the unicorn head pony that I see. It's not so much common as it used to be anymore, but it's basically when you have, like, a ponytail on the top of your head, and it's just, like, it's, it just looks lazy and that you're trying too hard. It's like you're trying to make, why, just wear a ponytail. And no one's gonna care. It's, it's a classic look. And, um, I, this is also just a style that I just don't like, because I think I, I personally don't find any real benefit to it. It's like when I see guys in baggy pants. I, I remember they used to be a lot lower, so it's not as bad as it used to be. But just I don't want to see a guy's underwear. There's been times I've been walking and a guy had his drawers down below his groin and I wanted to pull his pants up. But knowing what would happen, I'd probably get deemed with sexual assault just because I tried to pull his pants up, but whatever. And I just, I've had guys try and talk to me or guys that try to be friendly, but they're dressed up like a thug and then they get pissed off because I am just not sure about them. And for me, it's like your style designates how you want to be perceived. And if you're dressed up like you just walked out of prison, then it's kind of like, I am not sure what you're talking to me for, I guess. I just don't like it. I like a well-dressed man. I like the pants not to be baggy. I like them just to be presentable. I'm, I'm too grown up to be dealing with thugs. Thug life, whatever. And finally, we're getting on to beauty tips for every girl out there. And I can't give beauty tips to guys, but if you want to use my beauty tips, it's totally up to you. I'm totally not going to judge. So, here, here's the major thing that I see happen when girls are start, start, first starting to getting into makeup. So, there's one key rule that you must understand when doing any makeup. You focus on one feature of your face alone. You don't want to have crazy, really nice, smoky eye or just vibrant eyeshadow and then be all like... So if you're looking at this and thinking this is okay, this is probably just barely passable because I'm wearing neutral eyeshadow. But if you are wearing very, like you have a lot of makeup on your eyes, you want to emphasize your eyes, don't wear a bold lipstick because it's just, I call it clown syndrome where you're just, ah. And by the way, boldest lipsticks on the market, Milani. I bought the, the only excuse I have for having an orange lipstick is because I thought this would be sheer and come out coral, and it's not. So if you buy Sweet Nectar, Nectar by Milani, you will get orange lips. 
but it makes a nice sherbet when it's mixed with pig flamingo. So that's my rule number one. Rule tip two, despite my first rule and or advice don't be afraid to play and be a little crazy you are totally allowed to wear bold lipsticks but i'm letting you know if you are still getting used to it be mindful be very mild with your eyeshadow or don't even wear eyeshadow just wear your pressed powder you use for your face just to and just some mascara and eyeliner that way it's just not too much for people to take in good tip number three Make sure you have the appropriate brushes for what you want to do. And I'm going to go through them real quick. This is a blush brush from e.l.f. However, I do not use it for blush. I use it for bronzer. Bronzer will help bring out your face. If you have a highlight like a concealer stick that's a lighter color than you, you will want to put it on the contours of your cheeks. So that arch where your cheeks are, where you, when you smile, you're going to want to put the highlight just right there blend it in a little bit and then when you actually have a contour like I have the wet and wild it comes in a big pack so there's a lot of surface area so if you need to actually blend it down into your neck and your chest you can do that and it even has a little sunscreen in it and I sorry and this is ticket to Brazil this is actually the lightest bronzer that wet and wild had that I can find and it works great you can layer it if it's not dark enough for you you can keep going in with it and then what you want to do is you want to just dab it in a little bit, tap it a few times, and then just kind of go in like this, blend in. If you have a lot of acne scarring like I do, you want to actually, you can use that to help conceal it and cover it up. Make sure if you have a want to make your face a little more pointed, you come close to your chin right here, blend it into your neck. That way you don't get mask face where you can tell someone's wearing makeup because their face on their skin on their face is a whole different tone different from their neck. And then you can also come into the, it doesn't help that I'm wearing glasses, come into the little temple and it will help make your face look more narrow and actually bring that in to your forehead. And it doesn't help because I'm wearing. And then bring a little bit in on your nose, on, on this part of your nose. Here. I'll be a little blind, but that way you can actually make your nose look a little bit more slender. From the bottom, bring your nose out a little more. And then if you have a big nose, you can also use this to help actually make it shorter or at least less prominent. So I like to make my nose look pointy. So you guys, and you can also find stuff online to help you with that. Type in makeup tips for face shape, makeup tips for big noses. You will be able to find this stuff. So I have a heart shape face, or actually between a pointed and a heart shape. So I had to basically research my face type and get big tips on makeup on how I want to emphasize my style. Let me get my glasses back on so I can see a little bit better. And let me get back to my brushes. Kabuki brush. This brand called Essence of Beauty. This one sucks. It comes, uh, you can see the little hair sticking out of it. So I spent like $10 on this. Don't buy this brand. I'll pro if I had a, a chance, I'd probably buy an e.l.f. one because the e.l.f. brushes actually work really good. So this one, actually this is not even an e.l.f. brush. This is just a really old cheapy brush. This originally was rainbow color, but it actually, like you can see a little bit of the pattern right there. Um, I use this to pick up my lighter color and actually dab it on the under part of my eyebrow. I use a white from Prestige. If you are very fair skinned or have fair hair like I can, you can get away with wearing white. But if you have more of a tan, caramel, or even dark, I would recommend getting like a gold or something that's not obviously going to make it look chalky under there. That's going to blend in a little bit better, but it's still going to function as a highlight to help bring out your eyebrow. Um, then we have the eyeshadow brush from e.l.f. You can see it's flat. And you, what you do is that you actually dab this into the eyeshadow, you tap it, and then you actually t go in and just kind of press it on and smooth it on. And this is also another eyeshadow brush. And it has a little bit more of a point to it, as you can see. And what I like to use this for is actually the crease brush. When you pick up your product, like a little bit of a darker tone, you'll actually go in and go right under your crease. You want to focus more on the back end. That way you can do a more smoky eye. But you do also want to bring a little bit into the crease. So that way you can get a nice definition of the lighter color that's on your lid. Don't blend with any of these yet. Well, I'm getting to that. 
And then we have an angle brush. This one's pretty cheap and it's lasted me a pretty long while. I don't even remember what the brand of this was, but it was like this really cheesy rainbow color on the thing. And what I like to do with this, this is what I use to actually use my eyeliner. I don't know if you guys can see it a little bit. But what I like to do, I'll, I won't even like scrub at the eyeshadow or whatever I'm using. I will just kind of tap the surface and I'll tap the brush. And I actually use like scotch tape. And I'll actually show that with you guys real quick before I get too carried away. But I actually learned this from another girl on YouTube. And after you put on your foundation your, and your fingers are a little dirty from putting on your foundation, you want to kind of get the, a little bit of that on. Oh, that's bad. It's hard not doing this in a mirror. And usually the tape's a bit longer, but um, you get some product on it so it doesn't completely adhere to your face. So when you take it off, it doesn't take all a bunch of product that you have on your face with it. And what you want to do is you want to line up the edge of the tape with the bottom lid of your eye and point it towards your the end of your eyebrow and this actually makes an edge so that you can actually take for example your angled brush if you're still getting used to it and I do it just because I'm really particular about it being perfect and use the edge of the tape to help make a little wispy line for you and it will make a straight line but you could actually use that line and then curve it if you want to and that way you don't have any like any crooked wispy lines on your face and it's a really nice trick and then after you actually get it off and you have this really super defined edge then you will take your blending brush right here it's going to be like this little poofy one and you'll just actually go i recommend going from the lightest color and kind of working around the edges that way you don't darken any of the eyeshadows that you have and then just blend the lines and you don't really want lines because you want it to just have like a nice fade. So I'm hoping I'm going over this quick. Secondly, this is the only time I've actually bought like a designer name kind of like accessory. And this is the Sonia Kushik. The only reason I bought it was for that right there. Normal eyelash combs have like these blunt corners and you can't get into your eyelash with that. I spent like maybe six bucks on this. This is in the whole reason this has been totally worth it. It's a metal edge. You can actually clean the mascara off and you can get in there and get in your lashes. And it comes with this too for like your eyebrows, but I don't even use it. I actually, I lost the other thing I was looking for, but anyway. And another trick, if you want to curl your lashes, take your hair dryer, put it, that hair dryer, you know how you curl your hair to make curls. Take your hair dryer, don't put it on too long, wait until it gets a little warm, and actually go in and crimp your eyelash. Be very cautious not to get it too hot. Your eye is very sensitive, as I'm sure you know, but if you touch your eye with this while it's hot, you will probably not only make it worse, you might poke your eye out. So be very cautious. Additional tip, I recommend having an eyebrow uh, pencil. I use the Wet n Wild uh, taupe and I might actually this is my new one I bought because my other one is like that long <laughs> and I have I do pluck my eyebrows and a lot of times um, I do get I do have like thinning out near my corners of my eyebrows and so I just take in the eyebrow brush I'll make it a little bit de like more defined in my eyebrow crease and then work my way down and then I'll take um, I could take, this is like the really use for this type of brush, go in and actually kind of blend it out so you don't see this huge pencil line in your eye. So I will come back to you guys with more stuff and I hope this, this quick little makeup tip is very helpful. And I am wearing blush, but I recommend if you have a lot of red tones in your face that you should get like a green type of primer to help even that out before start using blush because or you don't even have to use blush at all. I think there was a new trend going on for the fall that blush, just, you don't need it. So, talk to you guys. Love you guys. Bye! One more thing. I will make another plus size discussion video involving stories, and I will also put more links in the description below. If you guys questions, comments, suggestions, please like, please leave comments, please get me motivated. Mwah!